well. All's good. Welcome to today's episode of Southern Farmer. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe. Came a light shower here in Bruce yesterday around six o'clock maybe six thirty and uh we're putting in a half a tank of roundup should get over five four twenty five have eight people um put some grass I like spots around the edges and down the lower end of this field. Um, it's uh, real wet. Nature soil and it stayed wet through the. We had we had all this place clean. I had, I had the entire crop clean. Sprayed it twice. But, uh, Roundup, dicamba, and anyway, about to clean that up. There's some beans below the. One of the old railroad tracks kind of pumps the railroad track in the morning. But uh, I'm gonna spray them and then put bow worm spray for some insecticide back in, pesticide back in, high rate roid, and go a few miles west and 80 and go back north and there's 350, 325, 350. About to get started. Well, a tank or a half a tank turned into uh, a tank and a half. Uh, there were some soybeans below that was going to spot spray. I ended up spot spraying all of that cotton. I think I got it cleaned up fairly well. Uh, ended up spraying about the whole whole field of beans. I'm walking through now looking at a Some more beans. Want to know? Want to get back on the road? But I walked across the old railroad bridge to see. I think these are gonna be be fine for now. These beans look good. It's like these beans are the very, very last ones we planted. Um, they like, of course, they're up on a bed, but they're about waist high. Most of them look like that all the way across. There's a little spot back in the back. I'm sure it's a little grown up. I'm sure there's some grass in this, but they're calling for some rain this afternoon. It's like 10 a.m. and I gotta get three, 400 acres more sprayed and some travel time and some small fields. And I need to go take care of those worms worse than I need to worry about a little bit of grass and some soybeans so about to go do that that field over there i was gonna you know try to show you guys places where we were going to level or we did level the field part of it and uh that field's been a mess beans would look just like this you know what you would call high yielding 50 plus potential plus yielding bushels per acre looking beans of course i mean a lot can go wrong between now and now and harvest but you know some good looking beans uh here's the railroad bridge i didn't want to drive across that probably hold me up but anyway <clears throat> those beans over here they were just real real wavy I can see some of it there. Just a lot of wet spots, didn't drain good. It's a, it was leveled, cleared probably 12, 15 years ago. It was like a hardwood swamp. And then we land leveled it, tried to get it to drain had been planted a couple years before we leveled it 
and it's not by us, by the one of the landowners. It swapped hands. The landowner that has it now paid for a lot of the work done on it. Well, wouldn't you know, last year it laid out a year or two that we got it leveled, land formed. And wouldn't you know, <laughs> long story here, the, uh, nobody knew but the field, or about, as you can see right here, the strip of grass that go down through there, all the way along this creek, and then half of that field. This was originally a 65 acre field. Now we farm about 40 acres in it. That over there was 80 that I just walked out in. Farm about 30 of it now. The prior landowner, which has since passed on, so nobody could ask him, had put it in a wetland protection program or WRP or something. Well, of course we go to certify it the first year after we leveled it, we planted it. They're like, you know, a week or so goes on. Hey, uh, you certified a, some WRP for so-and-so's farm. We're like, uh, pretty sure the acres are right, but you know, we'll come check. Here's the sprayer right, so. Been bouncing grass them all morning from the first time we sprayed it. But yeah, they're like, mm, you know, we, I don't know if they had to fly over it. I don't know if they took satellite, up to date satellite imagery. I, I don't know what happened. They're like, uh, yeah, you planted soybeans on this WRP or this wetland, wetland. And it's put in some kind of government program to you're not supposed to farm you're not supposed to touch it maybe bush i didn't think you're supposed to bush all this one um sure wasn't supposed to land for it but anyway uh long story short since it had changed hands and the guy died and we didn't know it was an honest mistake we were just trying to you know do our thing and the current landowner was as well so I guess it was all just forgiven and now we don't farm it. It's a nice high dry land formed wetland, if you will. Uh, so I think they may eventually, I don't know, uh, I don't I haven't talked to anyone that would really know or does know or thinks they know. They may swap some acres for this guy as he owns a bunch of land, the landlord owns a bunch of land swap some acres from somewhere else in the same county that are actually wetlands and let us continue to farm that like it had been done for years. There, it had just never been certified uh, as farmland until a couple years ago. Um, and the reason we certify these acres is because a lot of years, especially now the last couple years, it's been basically the only thing that pays, creates profit. So, uh, let me stop this guy. Go ahead, you got a, what, 800 of water or something? Yeah, probably. Let me just put a bug spray dose in and I'll get the other. Go get a full tank and go in the banner. I ain't gonna go over to hell of a I'm out right now. I walk out in those beans and uh, they're pretty clean. Anyway, uh, in that the wetland field, if you will. It's been in a, it was real wavy. We didn't do, I guess we, we did a good job, but anytime you landform or level a field that's as drastic as that one was, you have a lot of cuts and fields, um, all dirt into low spots and ditches and sloughs. Like I said, it was a swamp. 
it was legitimately a wetland before the trees were cleared off of it. So, that dirt has settled a lot in just random places. There's what looks like random places is where the old low spots are, the old sloughs. Um, well, those beans ain't doing too good. But then the rest of them look really good. So we're going to average probably, I don't know, 35, 40 bushels per acre on it, which will make a little money. But the reason we planted that and didn't work on it uh, is because of the government payments per acre, which are always uh, per acre, that this county's dying. Nobody knows what they're going to be uh, until you get them basically but there you go all the way up to like $170 last year per acre in like Tunica County um, we don't farm any in Tunica County I think some of them in our county Pontotoc was like maybe 80 60 or 80 and Calhoun's was like 70 Chickasaws may have been 80 or something anyway not many counties were over 100 but some were um, and if, if that gives you an idea, if you can plant a crop on a field and break even, for instance, just pulling numbers out of there, if you farm 10,000 acres and have $150 per acre um, government subsidy, well, then you can break even. You better plant all you can to break even if you get that much. Because that's, if you farm 10,000 acres, that's a $1.5 million. So, you know, you can, uh, if you can break even on your cost of farming, which that would kind of suck to do, but it happens. And we've done it on several acres. You've lost money on several acres from time to time, year in. You're always going to have years like that. But anyway. That's how you get by farming, especially marginal ground. Way of life. About to turn in right here to the left before I get to this bridge. Basically, stop. What is that thing? That's not what color the tractor is supposed to be. And that's about 30 little wild hogs. Running everywhere, shaking the cotton stalks. I'll get them in just a second. There's Mama P running for the woods. There she is. My babies, she's taking care of them babies. The pigs everywhere out there. Somebody leave a comment if they know why this pig is like a Holstein cow, a paint horse. I guess it's some type of feral hog crossed with a domestic pig. Thank you guys for watching. If you like the video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel. See y'all.